Story 1. I have 10 years of retail experience and 12 years of teaching behind me. I've seen my fair share of entitled people, but this one, oh boy. I live close to the beach, about a 10-minute walk away. As you can imagine, on nice days, people park in our neighborhood free parking and walk to the beach. There is a lot of parking space paid nearby. Parking is quite enough for the residents, but not for us and tourists who don't want to pay or can't get a parking space nearby. My dear husband and I decided to remove some poles from our front yard so that I can park my car there. It's small and fits just right. And there is enough room to get the bikes out of the shed and things out of my car. Our front yard is our property, to be very, very clear. Here is where the entitled people come into play. Last weekend, the weather was quite nice. Not too cold, lovely sunny weather, and overall pleasant for the time of the year. Dear husband and I took our son out to a petting zoo. We chose to go with my car so that my dear husband wouldn't have to drive circles around the neighborhood afterward. After a couple of hours, we come home to find someone parked in our front yard. Yeah, no, not your house, not your yard, so certainly not your parking space. We decided to call the non-emergency line from our local police station to ask for advice. They tell us to call a tow truck and that they would be coming over to supervise if needed. Okay, cool. Tow truck company called, said they would be over in around 20 minutes. They had some other towing to do. I decided to stay outside to wait for them. Tow truck crew comes, we show proof of residence, and they start to do their job after getting some drinks from me. Mom always taught me to be kind and look after people even if they do the jobs you hired them for. They have their drinks, give a business card for the owners just in case, and leave. I go to my car and put it back in our own front yard. 2.5 hours later, our doorbell rings. The entitled people have returned from their extended walk on the beach. I open the door. Entitled man, hello. Our car is supposed to be here. Me. Yes, it used to be. We had it towed as it was on our property. Entitled woman. But there's no sign, so we are allowed to park here. Me. No, you're not. This is private property, and we don't need to put a placard or something. We had checked that. Entitled man, you little fibber. You just stole our car and sold it. Me? No, I didn't. I have the phone number of the towing company. Trying to hand them the card. Screaming ensues from both of them. I'm still standing in the doorway. Dear husband is throwing anxious glances from through our living room door. I'm 19 weeks pregnant, and he doesn't like the sound of what is happening outside. Then the fun begins. Entitled man tries to force entry to our home. Dear husband sees this, pushes him out, and closes the door. Afterward, we dialed for some blue-colored assistance. Meanwhile, we have a pair of banshees at the front door, ringing the doorbell and pounding on the door. A couple of minutes later, our blue-colored assistants showed up. My dear husband was not having me near them again. He went outside where the entitlement came wafting through the air towards us. He explained the whole situation to the police officers while the entitled man and woman were screaming things like liar and thief. Dear husband even called the tow truck crew, and they affirmed they had towed a truck with the given license plate number. It came to a point where the police officers gave the entitled couple two options, either leave willingly or leave with a couple of shiny bracelets on. They left, screaming. The tow truck crew called us afterward, just to tell us how it went and ask if we were okay. They told us they had loads and loads of fun by messing with them a bit. Three times a guess what is screwed on our side of the shed. Yep, a note saying that our front yard is private property and cars will be towed. Story two. Long time lurker here. I have dealt with my fair share of entitled people, both in school and at work, and have so many stories to tell but this one I remember so vividly. I'm also not a native English speaker, so mistakes may be made. For context, my mom was in and out of the hospital when I was around 10, 13 years old because of bipolar disorder, and by the time this all went down, when I was 15, my mom was doing better, home, and she was even working. So, in my final year of secondary school, one of my teachers began pulling me out of class in the middle of lessons, at first, she just wanted to chat about my grades, which were average, but then she started asking more and more intrusive questions about my mom and her illness. She began to compare my mother's illness to her mother, 
who apparently had suffered from the same thing, and began telling me sob stories about her childhood. She also began asking me uncomfortable questions about my home life. I didn't say much, just sat there feeling very confused about it all. This happened over the course of three months, and eventually, I got really sick of her pulling me out of the classroom in the middle of lessons, and I snapped. I told her to stop pulling me out of classes and to leave me alone. I turned to leave and go back to class. She grabs me by the arm and tells me that if I continued to withhold information, she would have to call Child Protective Services. I told her to call them. They wouldn't find anything, and she'd be wasting their time. A few days later, I got called out of the classroom, not by her, but by my principal, who took me to her office where a Child Protective Services worker, my mom, and my dad were waiting. I realized I already knew the woman. She had been at our house sometimes while mom was ill. The Child Protective Services worker, my parents, and I talked, and she came to the conclusion that everything was fine, but I broke down in tears because the whole situation had been really stressful. My parents were furious. They demanded to know why this teacher thought it was okay to harass me about something that was none of her business. We never got a proper answer, and the teacher refused to say anything. She stared daggers at me, though. The Child Protective Services lady was angry about having her time wasted and demanded some type of action from the principal. The teacher was not allowed to be in a room alone with me anymore and under no circumstance to take me out of the classroom alone. Eventually, she was moved to another class and later let go for harassment and assault of another student. By the way, I didn't tell my parents because I was a dumb kid thinking I was the one who would get in trouble about it. Story 3 Hello, fellow Earth aliens, plague recipients, degenerates, unemployed, sociopaths, saints, average Janes and Joes, and otherwise sentient life forms. Normally, I'd never share anything this personal on social media. It's just not my thing. My thing is gardening and dogs and creeping Reddit and bad cell phone games. But sometimes we all just reach our breaking point. We all just say enough. Today is my 31st birthday during a global pandemic on March 31st. I would say that's notable, momentous, even eventful, some would say. But that's not why I'm writing to all of you. Coronavirus can kiss my behind. Hell is other people. All of this started partially by my own doing a year ago. I agreed to a room share with my knowingly narcissistic friend of 17 years. He was moving back to the States after living in China for three years. He seemed more well-adjusted. He had met the partner of his dreams. I love this person. I thought to myself, everything will be fine, OP. You know how to put up with his nonsense. You'll save money. It'll be great. Obviously, the other doormat humans of the world know that this was a serious and egregious oversight on my part. Cartoonishly foolish. Definitely 100% will end with OP getting treated like dirt. All of you can skip to the end. Things were okay at first. He slept on my couch for two weeks without paying rent before my lease was up. Smoked all my special herbs, you know, the normal stuff. Him, my brother whom I've been roommates with for the better part of five years, and myself sign a lease on the outskirts of a trendy neighborhood. It's the kind of neighborhood that has a hipster coffee shop right next to a restaurant that's only open three days a week right next to a condemned crack house, and you're pretty sure it's just a front for illegal activities. But whatever, you're only 10 minutes from downtown and no one's broken into your house yet. Life is great. We all made decent money, even if we hated our jobs. Three months in, the saga begins. Roommate smokes insane amounts of special herbs and takes performance-enhancing substances to focus all the time. Laziest substance user I've ever seen. Roommate accuses brother and me of stealing money from him because he spent $1.501 month on special herbs for personal use and smokes the occasional bowl with us. Roommate has a job working at a highly specialized summer camp at a well-recognized university. Roommate works from home nine months out of the year and supervises teenagers for three months during the summer, all while getting paid $45k a year with those cushy government benefits. I really wish I could get paid to smoke special herbs and play computer games. Life really would be great. Roommate's fiancé gets arrested for controlled substances in a totalitarian country. I ask roommate to treat me like a human because it freaks me out that he never speaks to me and never leaves his room. I'd also appreciate it if he'd clean up after himself. 
Roommate says I'm insensitive for asking him to be cordial occasionally because I am experiencing depression also and would like for him to at the very least ask me how my day was every once in a while. We were good friends for some time, after all. He's just under so much stress right now due to fiancé troubles and job that he can't be bothered to acknowledge my existence. He also can't be bothered to acknowledge the existence of his dishes, trash day, an ashtray, or his actual job. Summer comes, I quit my job because I hate it, and it's slowly eating my soul. I do not have another job, but I'm done. I take a job supervising children at the summer camp for one month. Things continue to deteriorate. Roommate's fiancé flees totalitarian country to avoid mandatory community service in the home state and comes to live in our house rent-free indefinitely. Roommate's fiancé is a lovely person. Brother and I get along very well with him. Roommate elopes, they get a puppy, violating lease terms as the only dog allowed on property is brother's dog. All is well. I get two jobs which I love. I'm happy and busy and social, and I don't need that jerk. I pretty much write the friendship off at this point and just want to get through the lease without any volcanic explosions. Brother's friends with benefits gets pregnant and decides to keep it. She moves in with us too. I'm okay with this because she's a good human and also needs a safe place to incubate a tiny person. I now live in a three-bedroom house with four other humans and two dogs and continue to pay one-third of the rent and bills. Brother's partner and I do nearly all of the cleaning despite the fact that the roommate and husband are always home and cooking, and we all go to work. Fall and winter come and go. I try to keep the peace. Doormats and pushovers enter here. Spring arrives, and Australia is on fire. Kobe Bryant dies in a helicopter crash. China has some nasty things going on. And I shamefully watch Love is Blind on Netflix. Everything is fine. After weeks of discussion dodging by roommate, we politely tell roommate that we do not wish to cohabitate with him and new husband after the end of the lease term. New baby is due in March, and I've accepted that I'd rather live with a newborn than some psycho off of Craigslist trust me. Just don't do it. I've been there. Roommate states that he and new husband just can't move right now due to the extenuating circumstances like how fake real jobs are too stressful during the summertime. He would rather illegally sublet from us indefinitely once the lease is up. And it'll be totally fine living with five people and a baby and two dogs. They'll probably be out by the end of the summer. We don't want to argue with the roommate despite the new baby being due in March and lease being up in April. So we agree to find a new place. Roommate and new husband can find another roommate. We give required notice of said intentions to our landlord. Roommate informs the landlord that he will be staying. We find a nice place for $400 a month, less than our current place in late February, and sign a lease in early March to move in in April. Everything is great.